populations. Islands usually offer their population very simple habitats. The many volcanoes in the Galapagos archipelago, however, allow for more varied conditions. Under the influence of steady trade winds, several different climatic zones developed around the island massifs, and each has its own characteristic vegetation. From coastal desert, dry brush and rainforest, to cold and moist mountain regions, each large island has several ecosystems, one above the other, like a sandwich. The giant tortoises favor the middle zone with its relatively lush vegetation. They were once so numerous that the first visitors named the entire archipelago after them. Islas de las Galapagos, the tortoise islands. The tortoises also achieve fame as a classic example of evolutionary progress. Their history is probably similar to that of the iguanas, just one or two specimens washed ashore. From these few, 14 subspecies evolved in the Galapagos, each perfectly adapted to the specific conditions prevailing on their respective island. On Isabella, the largest island, different forms have even evolved around each individual volcano. Because the suitably rich areas of vegetation are separated by dry deserts, which the animals seldom cross. If even these small desert areas act as barriers, how did they manage to colonize the other islands as well? They're certainly not known to be ardent seafarers. The answer is surprisingly simple. During the Ice Ages, most recently, about 10,000 years ago, the sea level was about 120 meters lower than it is today. In those days, many of the volcanoes formed a single connected island so that land animals could migrate easily. When the glaciers finally melted and the sea level rose again, these pioneers were stranded on separate islands and thus evolved independently. The Galapagos archipelago is just like a large open air laboratory and to study such processes, it is important to preserve the original conditions as much as possible. That is why Heinke Jäger is often on the move. Until recently, the small Bainbridge Islands off Santiago were plagued by the descendants of rats, which probably escaped from fishing boats. These rodents seem to have been successfully wiped out. While her colleagues set bait to check that the islands really were free of rats, Heinke records the development of plant life after the disappearance of the foreign rodents. The unique flora and fauna of the Galapagos can only be preserved if the effects of alien species on the ecosystem are carefully documented. Black rats are a special problem. Their effects on the bleak islands can be disastrous. Fortunately, small mammals are not equipped for long sea journeys. Only two South American rats reach the islands by natural means. The so-called rice rats evolved into seven distinct species, three of which have become extinct since the arrival of humans. The small rodents lead a frugal life and seem to have little effect on the bird populations. Their diet consists mainly of seeds and fruit, plus the occasional nocturnal insect. They were obviously able to cope with recent competition from non-indigenous mice. This mainland mouse is no real rival for the meager resources. The black rats, however, which have meanwhile invaded many of the islands, are a direct threat to their livelihood. On one of her expeditions through the archipelago, Heinke spends the night with two English colleagues, Donna Harris and Stephen Gregory. The couple has been camping for months on the coast of Santiago. They are catching rats, native as well as alien species. Most of the rice rats in the area have been caught in the traps before, but they seem almost eager to be caught over and over again. They do look very cute, but... 